are doing a disservice to our girls and young women by pushing them into careers in engineering and medicine. Okay, now don't get me wrong. I certainly think we need more women as engineers, as doctors, in physics, in chemistry, microbiology, in all of the STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math fields. But that's where I think we're misguided because we're missing one crucial contingent of STEM. One field that has more of an impact on our daily lives and the success and the future of life on this planet. We need more women in conservation. You see, conservation is the field, yeah. Conservation is the field that studies and engages in the protection, management, and restoration of our wildlife and our critical natural resources like our soils, our forests, and our water. Conservation is essential to our daily lives and everything we depend on. And I submit to you that among STEM fields, conservation is queen. Yeah. So in my years as a conservation scientist, I have restored and engineered wetlands. I have conducted wildlife population surveys and monitored and modeled population dynamics. I have identified thousands upon thousands of vertebrate and invertebrate specimens in the stomach contents of frogs and calculated the statistical variance of frog populations and their diets across regions. And all the while, I've used technology to interpret my data and make it relevant to new audiences to share the wonders of what I've been learning. Today, I rely upon STEM in my dream job as the refuge manager of the new Valle de Oro National Wildlife Refuge. Yeah. So if you haven't heard about it, Valle de Oro is the first urban refuge in the Southwest, and it's right here in Albuquerque. And it's a project that we together are working on to restore habitats and connect urban populations to the outdoors. But I almost didn't make it here. You see, I was a kid who loved the outdoors. I would spend all of my free time catching snakes and frogs and bugs in the bayous of Houston. I was good at school and I liked science. So somehow to everyone around me, that meant I was supposed to be a doctor. Yeah, weird. Um, I was young. I wasn't really confident in my voice and I let others write my story for me. So I went to college like I was supposed to, and I started pre-med. The science culture I was pushed into took place completely indoors, in labs and offices. It was isolating and lonely, and it focused on minute details. I was miserable. I felt alone, I felt lost, and I saw my confidence slip away. I thought my teachers and my parents and everyone around me would be disappointed if I didn't want to be a doctor. Disappointed that I was giving up on my potential. And as my senior year started, I was on the precipice of just giving up. You see, because during the day I was a pre-med student, but in all of my free time, I would go hiking and wildlife watching. I volunteered at a zoo and I worked at a museum. The outdoors was my laboratory and I loved sharing my passion with others and studying ecosystems as a whole. So something just didn't jive. I was a young girl who only wanted the people around me to be proud of me and I wanted to give up the one thing I thought gave them so much pride. I couldn't be a doctor or a chemist or an engineer. I wanted to be a conservation scientist. You see, we as women, when trying to choose a career, we face the almost impossible task of making the most of what our foremothers fought for, breaking boundaries for the next generation, all while choosing a career that fulfills our needs. It's a career in conservation that allows us to balance all of those. 
Conservation is a field that's strong in STEM, a field that's less than 20% female, and a field that allows us as women to fulfill ourselves by doing good for our environment, our families, and our communities. So how do we get more young women into conservation? This is how I'm trying to bring it to reality. These are the women of Valle de Oro. And before you ask, we do not have a calendar. Now, I have the amazing opportunity to mentor these six women who are finding their way in the world of conservation for wildlife and their community. Together, we are seven women, 35 years old and younger, who are starting a brand new National Wildlife Refuge, restoring 570 acres of habitat in the South Valley and changing the game for engaging urban audiences and making a name for our refuge on a national scale. <laughs> so what can you do? I don't expect that you're gonna take six women under your wing to mentor you. And uh, these are my girls, so you can't have them. Um, but what I think that you should do is let's take just a moment and let's all think back to when we were kids. When you were young, did you have a love for animals in the outdoors? But did you put that love on the back burner because you had to get a real job? What if you knew conservation is a real job? These six women didn't come to the refuge with degrees in biology. They came with degrees in communications, in literary arts, in English, and planning. But we are all now conservationists. So what you can do is help the girls, young women, and even young men in your life to follow their passion. If you see a young girl playing in the dirt, catching bugs, don't yell at her about getting her dress dirty. Share in her discovery, support her curiosity, ask her about what she's learning. Maybe take her to a new urban national wildlife refuge to learn more. Tell her about a future and a career in conservation or bring her to me and I'll tell her. Because the bottom line is, women, and the world, we are all much better off when girls get dirty. Thank you. Thank you, girls.